Giveaway winner for my Stellar Crown Elite Trainer Box opening has been selected. Check the description down below on how to claim your prize. What's going on, bagel lovers, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to be building not one, but two master sets in the same binder. Stellar Crown is pretty small, so I figured I'd just shove it back into the back of the binder that I'm using for Twilight Masquerade. Hopefully it all fits. I think it will. Um, if not, uh, then this whole video is a waste of time. So <laughs> let's start building and uh, I'll show you guys my little approach on how I build up master sets. I'm also going to be giving away these two art rare cards from Stellar Miracle. All you have to do to enter and to win that is like, comment, and subscribe. All right, let's get into this. A little bit of a different video. Figured uh, I'd let you guys in on my master set approach. Uh, I picked this binder up uh, last night at League. Uh, it's one of the uh, 480 sleeves. Hopefully, I have enough space for both of these master sets. And I have them all like, <laughs> we're not gonna be searching through cards. I have them all already like pretty organized. Uh, so this shouldn't take too long. It's not gonna be like an hour long video, but uh, we're gonna start with the Twilight Masquerade stuff, and then we'll uh, go into the Stellar Crown. So, it's, uh, it'll be a fun time. Let's start. We got, I'll pull out all the grass Pokemon I have as far. Some of these I'm missing. I don't have every single card, but it's at the point where like, I need to put them into a binder, so. Yeah, that way I can just like, keep them organized and like, figure out which ones I need uh, left. I mean, I have them like, marked in my little um, elite trainer box portfolio here. I have a little check marks next to each one I have. But um, yeah, it's just easier to see them. Uh, for me, some people will put them like this. Well, they'll have the regular art and then the uh, reverse hollow right next to it. Uh, I like to just put the reverse hollow up on top right there. Uh, it's, just, it's just easier for me to remember that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's what I do. That's just my thing personally, you can do whatever you want. Um, this is just the way for me to make the most out of the space. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't have all the reverse hollows for all these cards yet. Uh, still gotta open up some stuff. That's why that Masquerade is a tough set. Um, I have a decent amount of the special illustration rares, but for the most part, I'm still missing a lot. So definitely gonna be opening more of it at some point. It's just the booster boxes are getting a little expensive, so we'll see. Actually, I think I have a video of a booster box opening of Twilight Masquerade that I filmed a while ago, and I just haven't uh, put it out yet because Stellar Crown came out and that was all the rage. So I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm sitting on a booster box opening of Twilight Masquerade that uh, I, I was happy about. Uh, I definitely pulled um, a card you're probably gonna see at the end of this uh, binder build. Um, so spoilers ahead for those of you who uh, don't like spoilers, just letting you know, just heads up. <laughs> Trevenant, Reverse Hollow. That's a cool one. Dude, the Grookey though, the Grookey line. I have a Reverse Hollow Thwacky. I don't just, I, it's probably in like a deck somewhere or in my like playable cards, but I know I have a Reverse Hollow Thwacky somewhere. That's the thing is I'll take, uh, I'll end up taking cards out of my, yeah, like I have a Reverse Hollow app one for sure. I'll end up taking cards out of like, you know, we usually use the reverse hollows to build decks with. Um, so if they're not in here, they're more than likely in one of those. And like for the hollows, uh, I will put the reverse in front of the regular holographic just because I think the reverse cards just look cooler. With the ancient and future Pokemon, it's kind of hard to like tell though, because it's, they're not like a very, it's a very like subtle difference between the um, the two of them. And then the teal mask. Oh, baby pawn. 
Yeah, Twilight Masquerade's a cool set. I really like it. Go into the Fire Pokemon next. There's not a whole lot of Fire Pokemon in this set. Uh, lots of Grass Pokemon, but not a lot of Fire. Not a lot of Fire, which is fine. Um, four. It looks like we're missing a card. I think it's the... I might be missing, oh, that's that's the uh, Teal Mask Ogre Pond EX. I have that in a deck. Uh, I can, I could grab it, I guess, but that's just where that at. I have that card, it's just in a deck. It's in my Hydrapple deck right now, but I think I'm gonna end up building a um, Raging Bolt deck, and then that's where that's gonna go. Mag Cargo EX, Dorkle. But yeah, a lot of the times, uh, if I don't have a binder, I'll just set them up like this in the ETB containers, um, just because it's easier to uh, keep them all organized rather than just have like stacks. Plus like, with opening so much, I will um, lose random reverses and stuff that I need. Like I've, I've bulked so many cards that I, uh, have could have used for older master sets that like I've kicked myself in the in the head for for bulking them, but you know it happens. Yeah, I don't have the reverse hollow lampant apparently, or the reverse hollow of the chandelier. The reverse hollow rares are a little bit harder to come by. It's kind of annoying. Um, I'm not used to the the, uh, the four. lines of the four the you know rows of four i usually do the uh three but uh oh look at that oh you got a reverse hollow tank growth it's just out of order let's go ahead and slide that baby right in there Whoop. Boop. god i hope this all fits <laughs> that would be it would be really silly if it didn't it'll be a cool master set though it'll be it'll be tight once all of this is in here it's gonna look awesome um Have uh, Twilight Masquerade and then Stellar Crown right afterwards. It's gonna be sweet. Sometimes I'll do that though. Like I'll just get a bigger binder and I'll just throw two master sets into one binder just to save space um, on the shelf, you know? Especially when it's a smaller set like Stellar Crown. Uh, Twilight Masquerade is not a small set. Twilight Masquerade has a decent amount of cards. What's, what's, you guys been looking at the prices of Twilight Masquerade booster boxes, man? That is, it's getting crazy out there, man. I just picked up a third one. I got three chilling on my shelf over there and I'm like, I don't even want to open these. Like these are gonna have to stay sealed and just sit, which is annoying, but Twilight Masquerade is getting pricey, dude. That Greninja is just going wild. Apparently somebody at my league pulled a Greninja out of a single, blister pack which is insane his first one he said he bought three and he pulled a greninja the greninja special illustration rare out of the very first one crazy i know i have the glaceon reverse hollow somewhere it's probably in my actual like evolution binder but and honestly like if it comes down to it and i am i missing like one or two reverse hollows like i'm it, it's not gonna be in the world I'm not gonna fret too much over it. Greninja, no, Greninja does not go there because Greninja is fighting. Cramorant. Finizen. Palafin. And the Palafin EX. Iron Bundle, not the good one. <laughs> yeah, see how like, yeah, the reverse holo of the uh, future cards is sick, dude. The rares are the same. I can actually show you because I have one right here. So see, and then 
the regular hollow it's the whole card which i think that that is much sicker i don't know why i just do i think that's way cooler all right next up we got our electric we're just whizzing right through these got zapdos Oh, nope. Something else goes between there. What? Oh, that's the uh, Wellspring Mask Ogre Pond, which I also have in a deck. <laughs> I have that in my Palkia V-Star deck, which I don't know. Have you guys been playing any of the new Stellar Crown decks? I um, played Palkia the opening week of it at League, and I did all right. Um... I think I won. I think I won. Two, I think I won two out of four games, um, which isn't bad. But I thought I would be doing better. I don't know. I just thought Palkia had a bunch of hype, and I was like, "Oh, I can play this deck. Like this deck isn't super complicated." And it's just like, I don't know. I I also hadn't played in person with it, so I, I made a couple of dumb mistakes like in the beginning. But I lost to a Gardevoir deck, and that was not. That was like you know <clears throat> something that I should have had in the bag. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you guys have been playing with any of the uh, new Stellar Crown stuff. I, last night, I played with uh, Dragapult, and I ended up getting third place out of 18, which was kind of cool. All right, I did have Iron Thorns. He is right there. I had it in my, like, I have a little, like, couple containers of, like, playable cards that I keep off to the side, so that was where he was hiding. Going in next, we got Clefairy... I feel like Clefairy's been seeing a lot more uh, love. Clefairy and Clefairy. Well, maybe it's just like the fact that all the Gen 1 Pokemon are seeing a lot more love. I don't know. Abra. Kadabra. <laughs> Speaking of Gen 1. And Alakazam. Shazam! Uh, yep. Yeah, go in there. But yeah, like I said, I'm missing some of the reverse hollows, but it's not the end of the world. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fret too much over it. Also, it's like sometimes I'll just like bulk some of these cards and not realize it. I remember when I first started collecting. Holy moly! Before I like found out that I could sell bulk cards, I remember I had. <sighs> so many bolt cards like i had them in like shopping bags like paper bags from like the grocery store uh like full size paper bags from the grocery store and i think i filled up like two and a half of them and i ended up throwing them in a dumpster because i was just like i don't need these cards they're all i was like trying to clean out a closet and i was like i don't need these these are useless and i it was probably like 300 at the time probably like 350 dollars worth of bolt cards and uh, i just didn't know so yeah the more you know <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, I could have used that money, uh, for sure. Monkey Dory. Ah, get in there. Monkey Dory, and then this Fezzendipity that makes you flip coins, and if you <laughs> don't flip the right coin, you don't attack. It, this, I remember setting up a deck just to have fun with that, like, online, and, uh, it was, it was definitely a lot of fun. I'm sure I made a lot of people very upset that they couldn't attack me. All right, we're getting into the fighting types. Or ground, whatever you want to call them. I usually just call it ground, but I guess it technically is in the card game fighting. Which, like, why didn't they just give ground their, uh, why didn't they just give ground their flowers here? I guess, like, the game is kind of just based off of, like, the original, like, card game, so. That's fine as far as typing goes. I remember playing back, back in the day, Pokemon cards from like base set. That was a lot of fun. Nose pass. I think we're gonna pull it off, you guys. I think I'm gonna be able to fit all of this into uh, one binder. I didn't do the math in my head uh, or beforehand to actually double check, but I've done this before with, um, 
with shining or with uh, Paldean fates and uh, temporal forces. I have those two in the same binder, and those two like barely fit because I wanted to put the um, promo cards uh, from like the um, Quackaval and the um, Meowskarada EX, like all those EX shinies in there as well. And that's why they like, <laughs> it's a very tight squeeze. <laughs> but they're in there. And the deck, you know, or the, the, the binder still functions. It's, it's pretty jam packed. I haven't really been working on that master set too much. Um, I probably will at some point, uh, but for the most part, I've just been kind of uh, focusing on the newer sets once I go back and um, do some more hunting, it'll I'll focus on temporal forces at uh, a later date. I have two booster boxes of that too, so I could open up some more, but I don't know. Uh, temporal forces seems like it could probably go down in price. You know, once the uh, once more cards that are in the set become more available, like I think they're gonna make a lot of. Um, same with this set. I think they're making a lot of the uh, Ogre Pond cards have their own little like collection boxes. Like the Teal Mask Ogre Pond is getting a collection box. So like that card price will go down for like the regular EX, which then will like make the rest of the cards in the set go down. So like kind of like, just, I'm kind of just like waiting for the right opportunity to, um, you know, try and complete some of these master sets. But I feel like I have a pretty good start, especially on Stellar Crown, which we'll get to, um, you know, eventually. I'm almost done with this uh, this section, with the Twilight Masquerade section. So once we get into Stellar Crown, you'll see what I'm talking about. I opened up um, a decent amount of pre-release stuff for it, but we'll get into that whenever um, we get to that. Twilight Masquerade, I feel like I've opened up at least like three or four booster boxes of it and i'm still missing like reverse hollows and i'm definitely missing a lot of the uh full art and special illustration rare cards for sure uh, but like i said uh, i'm not really focusing on too much of those i like to really start focusing on master sets like a while after they come out because then the cards are at their pretty much cheapest value uh, most of the time uh, Paldea Evolved is a little bit of an exception because those cards keep getting turned around and all sorts of crazy stuff gets done to them. So that one's a little bit of an anomaly for um, for the current for the current Scarlet and Violet era. Alright, getting into the dragon. Now I have a Dragapult it is in my Dragapult deck, so there will be a space for one of those cards. Right after this Dracloak. Right there. And then Tetsugiri is right here. Ah, get in there. Probably wouldn't, it, uh, you know, would help me get the cards in if I wasn't trying to jam them to, <laughs> in two at a time. <laughs> but whatever, I'm I'm trying to make this go as fast as possible. All right, into our colorless. Dude, this far-fetched artwork is so good. That's wild. Chancy, Blissey EX. This card's seeing a lot of play right now too, man. Blissey's got some. Uh, Blissey's got some tricks up its sleeve. This Eevee card is sick. Yeah, don't have the don't have the Apom reverse. But I do got the Ampom reverse. Ducklet. Juana, and Ursaluna. All right. 
about halfway through. If you guys are still watching, thanks. I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Comment if you want to enter into the giveaway. I know the I know Japanese cards aren't everybody's forte, but I think those Japanese cards are pretty sick, so. Like the art rare cards are just amazing, especially for Stellar Miracle and Stellar Crown, man. Getting into the trainers. Carmine. I wish I had the special illustration rare Carmine. That would be sick. But I mean, obviously I want the Greninja. The Greninja is the only card really holding this master set back. I'm, I'm hoping I pull it at some point. I'd rather pull it than try and spend. I'd rather buy like $300 worth of single blisters and open those than try and uh, just buy the Greninja outright, like at this point. It's a little different when you're tr dealing with sets like um, Evolving Skies because those booster packs are super expensive. But when they weren't, when they were regular price, I remember buying 50 at a time off of Pokemon Center's website just so I could <laughs> try and pull the Umbreon. And I did, so yeah. I'm happy about that. I'll probably end up doing the same thing for the Greninja if it keeps decline, like climbing. So I don't, I don't see myself actually trying to buy that card outright. I'm missing a card right here. I wonder what it is. See, this is the funny part of when you're like, am I just missing like a regular art, like common card? Ogre's Mask? What? Where'd that go? Oh well. I'm sure I'll find it. Where the heck did Ogre's Mask go? Oh, and I'm missing another one right here. What am I missing here? This is this is outrageous. No, I have scoop up cyclone. Hold on. Pause for the cause. I gotta go locate this scoop up cyclone. I'll wait till I'm at the end of this. 66. 67. Give me two seconds. I know where Scoop Up Cyclone is. Boom. Scoop Up Cyclone. I knew I had it somewhere. All right. Now we're getting into the good stuff. Get into the art. Illustration rares, full arts, and special illustration rares of Twilight Masquerade. Oh man, that's annoying that it starts down there in that corner. I wish it was up here. I wonder if I can find a promo card to like sit in place of that. I probably could. I'm just gonna find a promo card because I want all the art rares to start on the same page. It's my master set. I'll do what I want. <laughs> we got 69, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. Seven, seventy-nine. There are a lot of illustration rares in Twilight Masquerade too. Eighty. The Growlithe. That's like one of my favorite ones. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. Eighty-three. Eighty-four. I pulled so many of these Lairons. I have the, oh yeah, so the Diplin would be one of these. I have the Diplin in a deck, so that's where that is. 25, 86, 87, 88. This Eevee I did buy because I was like, you know what, it's there, I got it. I bought it at Collecticon. Didn't feel like having that go up any higher. Uh, 88, into the full arts, 89. I have the uh, full art um, Teal Mask Ogre Pond 2 that is in a deck. 91. 2. 
screen. Uh, yeah, I always end up like missing a decent amount of the full arts, but I don't really worry about that because they're none of them are more than like two or three dollars each, so they're easier to get and pick up all at once. Once I have most of the other bigger cards out of the way, you know. Um, I have a full art Kieran that is also in a deck. Um, let's see, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perrin goes right there. Um, but yeah, I think Kieran is probably like in one of these, in one of these spots. Um, nine. Oh, okay. And oh, yeah, I have Iron Thorns. I gotta put him in here too. Up. Ninety-six right here. Ski you. And yesterday, I picked up this guy in a trade. So this is the special illustration rare Hearth Mask, Hearth Flame Mask Ogre Pond, which I'm pretty pumped on. And I also have the Teal Mask uh, special illustration rare, but that is also in a deck. So we will leave it out for now. 10, 11, 12, right there. And 12, 13, 14, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16 special illustration rare Ursa Luna EX, which is the card that I pulled in the video that hasn't come out yet. <laughs> so, spoilers ahead. That is your spoiler right there if you've made it this far in the video. 17, 18, 19, 20. Perrin. And then 21, 22, 23, 24. Enhanced Hammer. rescue board. I also have the gold um yeah I also have the gold uh teal mask ogre pond that's also in a deck so basically I have every artwork of ogre pond all four of them but they're in my uh hydra apple deck which is probably gonna get end up getting turned into a um roaring moon deck but you know only time will tell All right, cool. Well, yeah, that's halfway through. I'm definitely gonna be able to fit all of this into it. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna start Stellar uh, Crown right here. Getting into Stellar Crown. We got Venusaur EX up in the top. Lediba. Ledian, number three. This awesome Celebi artwork, oh my gosh. Oh yeah, there's gonna be, there are probably some spoilers for this, uh, for a video that I have coming out next week. Um, because I'm, I opened up one more booster box of this set that hasn't come out yet, that will come out on Friday. Uh, so if you see any cards that you haven't seen me pull yet, that's where they're from. <laughs> uh, so spoiler ahead. You'll see, it probably won't see it till the very end though, so. Actually, it, it's like the last card that you'll probably see me put in here, so. But Stellar Crown was a lot of fun. I'm gonna do a whole, uh, I'm gonna do a video on it, on my honest review of the whole set. Um, kind of a breakdown of the things that I think are good, things that I think are just silly and bad. Um, but yeah, hopefully that uh, that should be a, should be a fun video. This is actually the video that I was thinking about doing today, but I felt weird doing a review of a set and talking about stuff that I pulled and like trying to give a review on like cards that I had pulled that I hadn't actually made a video about yet. Um, but so that's why I'm just going to do it next week after I um, have released all of my booster box opening videos, you know? All right, that's all the grass Pokemon. We got the Hydrapple. Good, good in, uh, inclusion in this set. Hydrapple is sick. Uh, I can't really get the deck to work as much as I would like to. Like, it's fun to play, and Hydrapple is a cool Pokemon. 
but I just, I can't get the deck to work the way I want it to. And I've tried a bunch of different ways and no way seems good enough because there's so many more aggressive uh, decks out there that just kind of attack it when it's vulnerable and it just falls apart if you can't get set up. So that's why I'm playing Dragapult because Dragapult has lots of strategery involved and I am liking it. I mean, I'm sure Hydrapple does too, but it's just a little bit more difficult. And I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I would. So that's my that's my little review on the Hydrapple deck. If any of you are out there playing a Hydrapple deck and you're having fun with it, let me know. I would love to know how you're running it uh, versus how I have it set up, just because I'm sure there's different ways to do it. Cinderace EX. I wonder if the Cinderace EX is good. I haven't really tried to mess with Cinderace EX too, too much, but um, it has a cool attack. It's got, it does cool stuff. So I'm sure it's like not terrible. Into the water, we got the Blasty Boy. Lapras. Lapras EX. I feel like Lapras EX missed the mark a little bit. Uh, if anything, like I feel like Lapras should have gotten a special illustration rare in this set, but what are you gonna do? I mean, the special illustration rares in this set are quite amazing. Um, like, for real, they're pretty, they're pretty dope. Uh, like the artworks, but um, I feel like Lapras is just such a fan favorite Pokemon that like, not that it like deserves a special illustration rare, but like, it, I feel like it's a missed opportunity not ha uh, having it get one. That's just my opinion. Caracosta, I'm glad those Pokemon made a little appearance in this. I mean, the fossil Pokemon in the TCG are pretty much like non-existent just because you have to start with like the fossil item and like it's just harder to get those pokemon into play <laughs> this greninja oh my gosh so i think that these are from like random little starter decks in japan that's why they suck so much um that's why they're so terrible like that and the greninja and the um mel metal that's why they're terrible um, I'll talk about more about that in my review video, though. That is definitely one of the things I was going to mention. Dredna, Belooza. Definitely a fun card. The Belooza and their Crabominable are fun. Uh, not sure if they're good, but they're fun. Going into the electric. Moving right along with this Stellar Crown portion. Maybe it's because I like these cards a lot. I'm like, yeah, dude, these cards are sick. Like, st <laughs> Stellar Crown is still real fresh for everybody. Uh, I usually don't build like a binder this early on um, after you know a set releases, but I opened up, you know, I opened up three booster boxes. I opened up, you know, twenty four-ish packs during pre-release and then I opened up an ETB so I opened up a decent amount of it and I ended up like being at the point where I have almost every single reverse hollow of every card so like the whole like front half of the set is pretty much completed um so I was like I'll just get a binder and I've been sitting on that Twilight Masquerade you know for a bit all right so I don't, I'm gonna say one thing about this Slowpoke card. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see this too. I don't think I've ever seen a card embody like a Pokemon better than this derpy little Slowpoke card. Like this is so derpy and this is just like so Slowpoke. I, I just like, it's 
amazing to me. I, don't know, I just had to take a pause real quick and talk about this card because this card is so good. <laughs> it's just so silly and I, I kind of love it. It might be like one of my favorite cards of the whole set, like of the regular cards. Mewtwo. Mewtwo's always like blasting some psychic energy balls. All, like in every animation, he's just like got a giant psi ball and he's about to blast you with it. Drift Blim. They've got a bunch of random like cards in here. Like they have a semi seer card, but not a or a pan seer card, but not a semi seer card. Like I don't understand that really. Um like they have a bunch of random like cards, but not the evolutions of that. So like Yeah, I don't know. There was a pan there's a semi there's a pan seer and then there's no pan sage or pan poor, so like, I don't know. It's, it's just, this, this set's odd in certain ways. Dash Bun has a fantastic special illustration rare that I would love to have. Pretty sure I could pick it up pretty cheap. Aspartha. Grievered. Iron Boulder to finish off the Psychic Pokemon. Cubone. Marowak. Rhyhorn. Rhydon. Rhyperior. Yeah, I don't know. Building Master Sets is fun. Putting it all together, getting to see all these cards all in one area. Getting to see all the cards in one space. The whole set kind of just laid out. It's nice. This set, though, I don't know. This set feels slightly disjointed, though. For some reason, I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's kind of like a hodgepodge of other stuff that they had like in Japanese that hadn't released in English and they were just like, let's just release this in English. Which is fine. You know, I'd like to get all the cards that everybody has all over the world. Crab Brawler. Blinks. Garganical. And then Coridon finishing off fighting. There are definitely a lot of uh, cards in this set that do a lot for like the game. The meta. Um, which is kind of sick. Like, it definitely shook a lot of things up in the way that people are playing the decks that are on top, which is nice. Um, a lot of them, though, like, are just kind of adding one or two cards here and there. Like, the Dragapult deck that I play really only adds, like, a couple cards that help it function a little bit better. You know, which is fine. Uh, but then there's another, you know, there's other decks that are completely new that are fun to play with. Um, you got the uh, Terrapagos decks, the Palkia decks. Um, they're a lot of fun. Clink. Clink, clang, and clink, clang. But yeah, I've, I've never opened a set and had all of the reverse hollows and all of the, you know, like the completed the beginning part of the set ever. Like usually there's always like a couple missing.
and they're like and it's really annoying <laughs> like to try and track down like a reverse hollow of something or like five or six reverse hollows of something um but this set for some reason i have all of them i have all of the reverse hollows for everything i might be missing like one or two but like that usually isn't like it like i have to open up a lot more to complete like the base part of the set so that's cool and for our one dragon type pokemon the baby raging bolt all right now into the color list this is where i feel yeah this is where i feel like the most of like the new cards are uh this deck this set did a lot for uh colorless pokemon which i guess is cool i mean i don't know i, I don't i haven't really played any colorless decks um but i feel like this set definitely put effort into making uh some super playable cards one of them being this knocked owl this knocked owl is incredibly busted and you can use Rotom to set him up. Okay. Another one that gives it a lot of uh, buff is this Bouffalant. Sure you guys have all seen the Tarapagos builds with the Bouffalant line in there too. Fletchling, Fletchinder, Talonflame. When are we going to get a Talonflame EX? Let's go. Let's make it dope. Let's get a Talonflame EX that just mercs everything. That would be awesome. I would love it. And Lechunk. Lechunk. Cyclazar. And then everybody's favorite, Cosmic Turtle. Terrapagos EX. And that is the end of the Pokemon. Now we're getting into the item cards. The trainer card portion of this video. We got Cover Fossil, Root Fossil, which who knows, are these even gonna see any play? Uh, under Depths. Briar. Yeah, this is where, like, this is what really changes the game up a little bit. Like, this, this, and then the Crispin card. Like, definitely adds stuff to, uh, to decks. Deluxe Bomb. Me. I don't know. Not really a fan of the Deluxe Bomb, but the Glass Trumpet is really sick. I mean, I guess the A specs always end up, like, adding a decent amount to the games like the card game whenever they get announced because someone's gonna find a way for it to be useful in some sort of deck. Oh. Nothing is as useful as Prime Catcher, but that's just Prime Catcher, so. Yeah, this is the only reverse hollow that I don't have is this Piapa Berry. It's the only reverse hollow I didn't have. <laughs> and Sparkling Crystal. Boop, nope. All right, well, I'm gonna start the illustration rares, but I'm gonna start on the next page, kind of like I did with the uh, Twilight Masquerade. So, for oh right, okay, so right here would be Bulbasaur. I do not have Bulbasaur yet. I will have Bulbasaur at some point, um, but that'll be 143, 144. Ooh, 145. 146. Picked that up at the card store the other day. I was pretty pumped on it. Ooh, 147. The Reboot. 149. 148 is Squirtle. I will have that eventually. Uh, 150. 152. I think that's the Zero Aura. 158. Oh, what's right there? Oh, the Metatite, or Metatite right there. And then Gulpin. And then Archaladon. Dang, they almost all fit on one page. Archaladon is on the next one, though. 
Dang, I'm only missing four of them. Cool. Two of them are the Squirtle and Bulbasaur, which are a little pricey, but I almost picked up a Squirtle the other day, but I'm kind of wondering if it's going to come down or not. Yep, yep. Into the full arts. We got Hydreppel, Cinderace, Galvantula, Dash Bun, Metacham, Orthworm, Briar, Kofu, eh, get in there. Crispin goes right there. I do not have Crispin. What are we missing here? I think the, I think that's where the special illustration rares start, is after Kofu. Oh no, we got Lacey right here, and then the special illustration rares. So we got Hydrapple, Galvantula, uh, Dashbun, and then Terrapagos. Which I'm super glad I pulled. Uh, do not have to worry about getting that again. And then we got, right after Terrapagos, we got Briar, Special Illustration Rare, which I also pulled. And then, Lacey. Then the gold, Terrapagos, which, spoiler, I pulled in my next video that's coming out Friday. Uh, so check that out. Friday when it comes out, and then we got Areas Near Under Depths and the Bravery Charm. And then I have my four pre-release cards, which I guess I'll just set them, set them up back here. Yeah, why not? That works. And yeah, that's about it. That's the Master Set Binder. Um, yeah, let me know how you guys set up your binders. This is just kind of how I do it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, sorry if this video is really long. I don't really care. <laughs> I just wanted to chronicle how I do all my master set stuff. Uh, if you guys want to enter in the giveaway to win those two uh, Japanese art rare cards, just like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you for being so committed. Uh, that video definitely went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but hey, you know what? I got it out. I wanted to make this video for a while, just like how I build master sets, so really appreciate you guys watching and have a fantastic rest of the day.